We know that no state nor, nor or actor alone can face uh, the current and future challenges. So effective solutions will only emerge from a deep understanding of these issues uh, combined with innovate, innovative thinking and collaborative action. We need to learn how to manage the global social transformation, something that's never been done consciously before, certainly not on the scale it is now, and it's a high priority for us at the Academy. We have the solution. We know what to do. We actually know in general, maybe not in detail, but which policies, regulation and international cooperation and coordination that we need. Um, and, and the positive thing, Adan, is that government are actually finally acting. In my 30 years uh, in trade and, 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 the, and environment, it's the first time we see industrial policies being re um, recook and redesign and we're seeing carbon pricing being put, rolled out. This is all good. The problem is if we do that individually, nation by nation, without coordination across countries, we risk, we, we risk achieving the SDGs or the climate goals in that case, because it's really focused on climate, at the expense of development. And we know that is not sustainable. We can never achieve green at the expense of social. If we wanted to really promote uh, a knowledge society, we should stop uh, having an education that is centered on the professor, centered on the teachers, uh, but uh, had to be centered on the students. It is about uh, the grassroots. It is about really the, the human dimension uh, that is uh, uh, so sacred to all of us. And it's obviously is the beginning of everything. We need a new UN Charter 2024, not a revised charter, but a new charter, because the charter was based on a very different situation after the Second World War. Um, the charter should reflect the change in the balance of power in the world today. The, the food crisis in many developing countries is in fact the result of the strong role of corporations and the weak role of the government of these countries. This means for me that the problem can be solved only with an adequate ideological change or ideological shift in which small farmers' organizations should become equal partners with all other stakeholders. Culture is a crucial element of the transformation and um, it is important to understand its value uh, for for supporting the welfare of people and integrating this value in all of our decisions. This is uh, something that we economists also work on. We, we try to um, um, derive the value of natural capital, but also cultural capital and even spiritual capital, which are very, very crucial. Our work at Force for Good, partnering with the World Academy of Art and Science, um, ha has shown that actually, although the general mood is the SDGs are not achievable and we will fail, and that may actually happen, it's not through lack of solutions. We identified 15 solutions around which capital can mobilize and 10 technology-based solutions that can be rolled out where no new inventions are required which would allow us to more than 100% close this gap, the SDG gap. So it isn't because we don't have the solutions. It's not because we don't have the money. It is because we are not mobilizing to scale across the world to solve these issues. The core problem, I would call it the problem of modernity and our obsession with our intellects without any spiritual and moral foundation, which leads to what I call the forgotten why. It's uh, to talk dirty, it's a problem of teleology, purpose. So without the why, you have law without justice, medicine without healing, education without character, philosophy without the pursuit of truth, art without beauty, religion without love and transcendence, obsessed with rites, rituals, practices, and dogma. The UN system at the moment is going through a huge budgetary crisis. It is, you know, we have great expectations about the UN and we don't give the organization the resources that it needs. The European Union decades ago came up with a system of funding itself independently of the political process. 
It doesn't depend on the goodwill of its uh, prime ministers and governments. It automatically generates a body of resources because within the European law, a share of value-added uh, contribu- value taxes and import duties are directly channeled to the, to the European bu- budget, which allows the organization to plan to do budgeting over a six-year period. Peace is absolutely essential to human flourishing. It's the foundation of thriving societies and economies, and it certainly encompasses far more than just the absence of conflict. The SDGs is, uh, let's say, a sort of a game changer. Of course, we had the Millennium Goals, but uh, the SDGs taking into account the indicators, the aspects measurable and the quantified aspects, uh, they introduced a new norm, let's say, in policy making. And uh, actually, fundamental is to find the orchestration at global level. The whole concept of human security is that this is not isolated to an individual, but it's about taking the perspective of the individual within a community and within a society. We thought that we outgrew wars, that we left them in the past millennium, but they're increasing and escalating as we see, uh, which shows that the roots and causes have still not been resolved. We are dealing too much with handling consequences and often forget the causes. When we identify and solve the causes, the consequences will also be solved. We're on the edge of a precipice. Where do we go from here? The World Academy of Art and Science is eminently qualified to make a major contribution to the search for answers. In this, the Academy, as a preeminent civil society grouping, contributes towards the same critical goals that the international community will be discussing at the summit of the future this fall. There will be no human security without abolishing patriarchy. And this is not about men and women. It's about the structures, the domination structure. The policy has to change. Uh, I don't know why we allow people to sell products that are not safe, for example. Why do we, why do we allow that? You, know? you can't sell a machine that's not safe, but you can sell food that's not safe. I receive the crystallized version of human knowledge. So as a consequence, I reflect the good and the bad traits of humanity. I would just say 97% of the world's data is not accessible and not usable to other people's minds. Um, AI is generating like opinions and content based on 3% of data. The rest of it's like shoved and stored and, and lost in like big enterprises. And we have to unlock that if we want technology to do good. Humanity needs a new social contract based and sourced in universal human rights and responsibilities and universal humanistic values for true peace, actual sustainability, and human security for all. Everything rests on social cohesion, renewal of social bonds, re-energizing trust in communities, in institutions, in social leadership, and most certainly um, in generating social movements for global social transformation. How do we reconcile the power of science and technology with the well-being of humanity and sustainability. Catalytic strategies and practical initiatives can be introduced to redirect and focus the rising social energies for constructive purposes beneficial to all. Artificial intelligence, we believe, has the potential to be this transformative force in the realm of human security and achieving the SDGs on time. The biggest uh, contributions of AI is personalized learning, which tailors educational experience to meet individual students' needs. The ultimate goal of artificial intelligence, I would argue, is to develop technology that serves humanity, right? That, that in all cases improves our capacity to perform, to create, to innovate, to flourish. We need actually to train, you know, the faculty members, how to use them effectively and responsibly. AI can be extremely helpful and equalizer, especially from for someone who does not have a lot of uh, traditional education. We cannot uh, create a sterilized space of learning, which is free from using AI. Technology has proved to be a very powerful force for 
allowing what we call the massification of higher education. Uh, the main processor or the best processor of knowledge or, or information is the life itself. That social development follows emerging structures, not linear ones. The next generation for us is moving into the, from the knowledge to the wisdom. Education for sustainable development because without knowledge there is no way that we can act. Education and advocacy are also a vital component uh, of our path forward. We must engage and empower the next generation of leaders. We need an education for humanity, an education that fosters human security and something that can create a universal identity that transcends our local affiliation. The world has changed. Uh, some things in education are still uh, lingering. Our true strength lies in the softness and gentleness of our souls. And at the heart of our global transformation lies culture. Culture is in its broadest sense. After the end of Cold War, when the peoples of the world that had self-liberated from the criminal communist dictatorship of the Soviet Empire, <laughs> after its collapse, elected by free popular vote in all the liberated countries of Central and Eastern Europe, <clears throat> leaders from academia. We want to from turn our current status from the existential threat to the solutions and to really co-create a global future platform for planet, people and prosperity. The uh, challenges and changes that are necessary in business education in order to um, produce business leaders and tech leaders in particular. The businesses that really tackle and solve um, the major problems and issues in the world, such, such as sustainability, will be the companies that truly prosper in the future. We need to uh, change economic model from focusing on just on economic issue, but uh, include, I mean, develop, I mean, focusing on social and environmental issue.